Hello again, everyone. One thing I uh, realized that I actually haven't done but I've talked a lot about is um, getting from Sibelius to a final MP3 or WAV file or whatever with your high quality sounds. And I'm just going to go and show you how I do that real quick. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. I'm just going to do a quick example. So I'm going to add, I'm gonna go with the violin again. And this stuff doesn't matter for right now. So, 4-4, four, four, C major, violin. Isn't that lovely? So, we'll have... Yay, C major. So we have our scale. Using contact three so here's one thing I would normally do if I was doing some kind of orchestral arrangement or just anything with a few instruments we have all these instruments so I'll load them again it's called a multi and you can save your multi as and you don't hardly ever want to save as patch plus samples I have never used this what this does is it will resave all the actual sample files that uh, you're using which creates huge files and uh, this is better it just creates essentially a file that tells sub or contact which samples you're using so I'm gonna do this as tutorial and since I only have one instrument right now it's only gonna bring up one later but alright so this is the multi rack that I'm using it has my violin in it this is my composition my lovely composition over here in Sibelius I'm gonna go file export MIDI file oh, yeah wonderful composition dot mid okay so we have that we have our MIDI file we have our rack multi saved over here you don't actually have to save a multi I just think it makes life a whole ton easier so I can actually close Sibelius now don't need to leave it open you can it doesn't matter so I'm going to launch Cubase LE3 and before anyone who sees this goes, oh, well, he's using a really old version of Cubase, would you kindly donate me a few hundred dollars to buy a new version of Cubase? Uh, don't worry about that. So, and I should just note, too, this version of Cubase, it works for me with recording and uh, doing the MIDI thing. I haven't really needed to buy a new version yet. There's been a couple times I thought, well, it might be nice to have uh, to have more master effect slots and stuff like that, but uh, not anything I've needed to spend a few hundred dollars on yet. So I went file new project, pick the folder. Okay, so project window. Um, we can go file, import, MIDI file. Um, do you want to create a new project? This is usually how I would do it, and then just let it create it from scratch with the MIDI file, but you don't need to. So you go f and you click no and wonderful composition dot mid. And you see it brings in the track and it brings in this MIDI track. That honestly, I've been trying to figure out what that's for for years. Delete it, you don't really need it, but you don't have to delete it. And so now we have our, uh, our wonderful composition MIDI track in here, but what the heck? It's not playing anything. You can see it, it thinks it's making sound. It's actually playing notes, but there's no sound. Well, that's because in Cubase, you have to load a VST. And in this case, we're going to use uh, contacts. So you go devices, VST instruments, and you can load anything here. And you see mine are in a uh, folder 32. That's because I'm just using the 32 bit ones right now because I moved the 64 bit ones for some reason. I don't remember. But uh, 32, contact 3. And you click on a little like E type thing here under the power uh, button, and it will bring up your VST. And now we have a couple of options. We can go violin ensemble, standard instrument, and we can load our violin sound like this. We just double click on it. Or we can use our multi that we created earlier. And uh, we go load, and we have to go find wherever it was we saved it to. 
Okay, after much searching and cutting out a lot of that searching, I finally realized that I saved it to my documents. <laughs> so here is our multi that we saved called Tutorial. And replace multi. This is if you already have other instruments loaded. It wants to know if you would like to unload those instruments and just can load plainly what you have in this multi only. So it doesn't really matter so I don't have other instruments loaded. But see, it loaded our violin sound that we had in the multi. And just for example, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and load. And this is a multi that I have created before for scoring noob sauce, actually, the web series from dot swoof. So replace my multi, and now it will go ahead and load every instrument that I have. And you can see it's actually loading a total of 15 instruments here. Now that's all loaded and that is a whole lot more convenient than having to go through the list over here and try and find all these separate instruments and trying to get them loaded with the exact same settings you had before and uh, trying to make it all just right. So if you just go save them all title, I'll be there. It makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to load recent and go back to our tutorial, replace multi, yes. And now we just have this loaded. Okay, so we go back over here to our main project window, and we don't have to set an in for this track because uh, there is no input for it. It's just playing back files. You only need an input if you're actually going to input like with a keyboard or something like that. So set the out to contact 3, channel 1, channel 1 over here, and it should work. Voila, it works in Cubase. So now we have that and we want to create an MP3 file. We draw the little line over here to tell it which part of our timeline we want to create a file of. You can also use just when it turns into like a little pencil guy up here, if you mouse around up here, you can draw it like this. And also the snap is on right now, which is why it's so kind of snappy. File, export, audio mix down. Okay, and you can go into the options and set different things like this. And uh, you see the options are still in there from a song I recorded a little while ago. And uh, some uh, recordings I've been working on. And save. Go to our desktop. There we go. Now just a quick note, um, if you don't know, to get Cubase to see your uh, your VSTs so that they're in this list, you have to, oops, you have to go to the program files for Cubase and place them in the VST plugins folder. And you can see I have my 32-bit uh, contacts in here. It will not see the 64-bit plugins, just like the same problem with Sibelius, um, because this is a 32-bit version of Cubase. It's a little, little bit more manageable in Cubase to have 32-bit, because if you really want to use all those instruments, you can bring in a few of them at a time and render them out to audio files, and um, then just mix down all your audio files later, and that way you still get really good quality. Um, but that's how you tell it to find your VSTs, and you can just get them out of the uh, program folder for your, usually, for your software. So that's pretty much how I get from Sibelius to an audio file. Um, if you have any questions, post it in the comments down below, or send me an email, tommy at projectandresource.com, or check out my website, tommycraft.com. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.